friends, it's teacher Rosemary, and today I'm going to read a book for you called Mummy Cat. And this is part of our Ancient Egypt summer camp. Now, in Ancient Egypt, cats were actually very important and revered, so much so that some of them after they died became, were turned into mummies. So let's see what happens in this story. It's written by Marcus Ewart and illustrated by Lisa Brown. I'm gonna take the clothes off my book. Look, looks like there's a pharaoh, a woman pharaoh, and a cat on the front. All right. The winds hiss over desert sand. The moon shines down on empty land. And long ago, so friends, this is in Egypt. It's the pyramids, and that's called the Sphinx. It's very hot and dry in that part of Egypt. The pharaohs hid their treasures in this pyramid. Deep within this maze of stone, a creature wakes up all alone. So this is a pyramid and inside is where the pharaohs would be buried. They would be mummified and then they would be put inside the pyramid into tombs. For the first time in a hundred years, he shakes off dust, he flicks his ears. From head to tail, dry strips of cloth, softly rustle like a moth. I wonder what's going to come out. <gasps> a cat. Who moves without a breath? A mummy cat who's passed through death. So mummification is a process they would do after a person and sometimes a cat would die. And one cold night each century, he gets up and he checks to see if she's come back, his loving friend, so that this lonely time can end. For she was the girl queen, hutch upset, and he'd been her hero, not just her pet. The boldest cat ancient Egypt had seen, the number one cat, the cat of the queen. So this character is inspired by a real queen of ancient Egypt, hutch upset. But now, just feels old and small. He shuffles slowly down the hall. So the kitty misses his pharaoh friend. And all around are painted scenes of his past life with Egypt's queens. Now inside the pyramids, inside the tombs, there are paintings of the people who are buried there doing things that they really liked to do in life. Mommy Cat purrs to see the smile of the young girl playing by the Nile. Now remember, that's the river through Egypt. Two boats floated, but one ship sank, clawed by the cat on the river banks. They're playing by the water. These are some of the paintings in the tomb. Or this mural of a noontime nap, dreams of mice on the queen's own lap. Their couch was set beside the pool. The shade from date trees kept them cool. Oh, they're sitting in the shade together. upset drawing with her palette of inks and here he is posing a miniature sphinx. Sphinx was that other really big statue at the beginning of the book. Let's see if I can find it. I'll go back and show it to you. Marvelous scenes of the way things were when mommy cat was alive with her. So this is all painted on the walls inside the pyramid. But the very next, next picture makes Mommy Cat wail. The queen struck down by a scorpion's tail. Mommy Cat knows he's not to blame, but he couldn't save her all the same. The scorpion struck both her and him and the poison spread from limb to limb. So friends, a scorpion is a poisonous animal. And if you get stung by it and you don't get help right away, you die, which is what happened to the cat and the queen. And inks to dances, games, and feasts, two small bodies wrapped by priests. So here you can see some of the Egyptian gods, and you can see part of the ritual that happens when mummies are, were created such a long time ago. The paintings stop, the cats alone, with silence, dust, and dull gray stone. Mummy cat slumps a little more, but up ahead, there is a door. And through that door, there is a room. 
the very center of the tomb. A chamber stuffed with lovely things, a crown, a throne, four golden rings, mirrors, dolls, and makeup kits, nothing that matters the slightest bit. Now when they would bury the pharaohs, or put them in the tomb rather, they would put all of the things in life that they liked because they believed in death, they would get to play with these things. Nothing that matters except for the queen, her face on the coffin, smiling, serene. This gold, cold golden coffin, is this all he gets? Where is the girl he can never forget? So Kitty has found the queen's coffin, which is very ornate and decorated. And look, the kitty's saying something in hieroglyphics, which we're also going to learn about, which is a language used in ancient Egypt for writing. He'll wait, he'll wait till his friend reappears. Will tonight be that night when she comes back? Will the coffin open? Even a crack? Do you think the coffin's going to open, friends? For three thousand years. And look, there's the kitty purring and happy with the Pharaoh Queen. The end. And the end of the book tells us a little bit about the real ancient Egypt. Now, friends, in real life, mummies don't come back to life. But people really like to tell stories when they come back to life because it was something that would be kind of crazy to happen. Now, I thought I, since I read a story about a Pharaoh cat, a mummy cat rather, Charlie might like to say hi. You can see he's sleeping. He's my kitty, and he would have loved living in ancient Egypt where they loved the kitties. Say hi, Charlie. All right, friends, thanks for joining me for that book. I'll see you on Zoom.